How to Eliminate Winding Behavior in Toddlers and Preschoolers Written by Beth Costanzo Narrated by Angela Olfest Why do kids whine? Because it works. Let's face it, toddlers and preschoolers can be a handful. For as much joy as they may create in our lives, there can be times, both at home and in public, where the stress can be substantial. Clearly, you want to make your child happy, but you don't want to exacerbate the problem by creating and rewarding bad habits. In this tug of war, it is all too easy to capitulate. We give in to the whining behavior so that we can eliminate the short-term stress. In the long term, however, this whining behavior often gets worse. Before we know it, stopping this whining behavior in our toddler or preschooler becomes much more difficult. As a multi-decades-long educator, I have seen all kinds of whining behavior in toddlers and preschoolers. The good news? I have also seen substantial changes in this behavior so as long as you put in the time and work. Taking the time to curb your toddler or preschooler's whining behavior can go a long way in making life better for you and your child. Whining behavior can emerge in a variety of ways. For example, you and your family may be out to dinner and your toddler may start getting impatient. He may be tired or want to go home to watch his favorite television show. When you tell your child that he needs to be patient, he may cause a scene. He may start yelling or crying, which can be embarrassing for you and your family. You may even need to leave the restaurant in order to calm your child down. Clearly, this isn't a long-term solution. Succumbing to your child's impatience and whining behavior implicitly rewards bad behavior. Your child subconsciously knows that whining behavior will pay off. And because of this, he or she will continue to do it intuitively. It makes sense. Three Pillars of Children's Learning Imitation, Repetition, and Consistency To escape this constant whining-reward-whining cycle, we need to address this whining behavior head-on. If you have read some of my other blog posts, you may remember that children learn through a combination of three things – consistency, repetition, and imitation. When I use the word consistency, I mean that you need to emphasize and practice the desired behavior at least once every day. If you take one or two days off, you will quickly discover that your child will have forgotten the behavior you're trying to emphasize. You will have to essentially start from scratch, which is undoubtedly frustrating. As for repetition, you'll need to repeat the desired behavior. As your child's brain continues to develop, he or she will naturally latch on to repeated behaviors. It is second nature to them. Because of this, you want to leverage this natural aspect of child development. Whether you are trying to emphasize certain behavior or certain words that your child should use. Finally, imitation is a huge part of child development. Like repetition, children naturally imitate the way that their peers and adults behave. If you or your partner are impatient or whining in your day-to-day -day lives, you will start to notice that your child will act the same way. On the other hand, if you are patient and respectful toward each other, your child will also notice. You are always on stage, so keep this in mind as you take on your child's whining behavior. These three pillars of children's learning are critical. To better illustrate how you can use them to curb your child's whining. Example, let's say that you are with your family in a local mall. As you are walking past your mall's donut shop, your child starts to notice a sticky and sweet donut in the window. The donut has frosting and M&Ms, which are your child's favorite ingredients. It's not surprising that your child wants to eat the donut. That said, not only do you need to leave the mall soon, 
but you don't want your child to eat a sugary snack before dinner. Unfortunately, however, your child is making a scene. There are plenty of tears and even some screaming. In this situation, it is easy to say, I will give you that sweet, sticky donut with frosting and M&Ms if you stop crying. This is the wrong thing to do. By doing this, you are actually teaching your child how to manipulate you. While this may stop the tears now, it will lead to plenty more tears in the future. Instead of this, you need to stay firm and rely on consistency, repetition, and imitation. You need to get down on your child's level. You can say something like, I'm really sorry, I can't understand you when you talk like that. Repeat that phrase again and use it when your child starts whining in similar situations. Along with this, check whether you, your partner, or other family members are whining in similar situations. If so, try to avoid complaining or whining. All of these behaviors and combination will go a long way in addressing your child's whining behavior. If your toddler or preschooler continues to whine, go back to these three pillars. Think about whether you are being consistent enough. Consider changing your approach to see if it resonates with your child. A lot of this is trial and error, so it is important to be patient. By sticking with it, however, your patience will be rewarded. Improving your child's behavior. Whining behavior can be tiresome and stressful, both for you and your child. But even though you want to remove stress and anxiety in your child's life, whining behavior can lead to even more stress in the future. Therefore, you need to directly confront this problem. Rely on consistency, repetition, and imitation. If you aren't seeing much progress, take a step back and analyze how you can change your approach. Above all, stick with it. While it may be tempting to simply give up and surrender to your child's impulses, I hope that you stay strong. Doing so will make you and your child happier in the long run. Life moves at warp speed. Finding the extra time in the day will help your relationship with your child, but most importantly, it will improve their behavior. Ask yourself these questions. Does your child whine during these times? 1. At dinner time. 2. In the morning before school. 3. In a store. 4. When other children are around. 5. When you are talking to another adult. 6. Before nap time. 1. At dinner time. Does your child whine before or during dinner time? Is your dinner time too late? If you're waiting for daddy to arrive, could you start with a snack while waiting? I would let the kids color prior to dinner eating cut vegetables with ranch dressing. 2. In the morning before school. Do you let your child wake up gradually and play before school? Or do you get he or she dressed and quickly head out the door? Could you read a story? Could you pack backpacks and get clothes and items ready the night before, so that the morning is easier with more free time? I would make our lunches and lay out my kids' clothes the night before. Also, everyone got a bath before bed. My kids would get up and breakfast was waiting for them. It gave them time to decompress before the day began. 3. In a store I have left my share of stores because of a crying child who wanted a candy bar at the checkout counter. I held my ground and said no. We then proceeded in the car with a mass hysteria and eventually we calmed down. Sometimes I turned up the music really loud and Poopsie stopped immediately and said, Mommy, that hurts my ears. I replied, That is how my ears feel when you scream and cry. My daughter soon got the message that mommy meant business and I wasn't going to cave and give in. Number four, when other children are around. Children often use whining and crying to get your attention. Acknowledge your child's need for attention. Your preschooler may resort to whining if he feels that he's failed to get your attention by speaking normally. 
That's why you'll often hear him whine when you're trying to talk to a friend. 5. When you are talking to another adult. A whining child may act this way for one of two reasons. 1. He is, in fact, in need of more attention from you, or 2. He is desperately addicted to having attention. Rather than engage with him or her when he is whining, walk away whistling. When it is over, strike up an unrelated, light conversation. By doing this, you will be removing any possible reinforcement of this behavior. By not revisiting it after the fact, you also remove any secondary gains he might get after his meltdowns, soothing hugs, comfort, etc. Number 6. Before Nap Time Nap time can be a lifesaver. Naps are a necessity for babies. Plus, these short pockets of time can provide new parents with a small break to rest or, let's face it, to get things done. If your child whines before a nap, you may consider changing the time. Try napping earlier and see if the behavior changes. There is no wrong or right answer with children. It is more of a trial and error. Find out what works and stick with it. Let's recap. Remember the main reason why your kids whine. It works. The truth is, children only continue behaviors that work for them. When kids aren't getting as much positive attention as they need from us, they'll seek it in negative ways. When kids whine and parents give in, kids realize that whining gets them what they want, the attention they crave and maybe even that candy bar in the grocery checkout. But removing the payoff and attention of getting what they are whining for, you'll cut back dramatically on this annoying behavior. Remember, don't give in to the whining. Whether you're in the grocery store or at the dinner table, say no and stick to it. Visit us at www.adventuresofscubajack.com to download this booklet. Please subscribe to my YouTube page for more fun videos. Everybody and follow me from the beach to the cold or in the sea. It's time for learning, it's time for fun. It's a great adventure for everyone. Come on, everybody, and follow me. Jump and swim out to the bottom of the sea. It's time for adventure, fun, and learning. Scuba Jack, it's a shark attack. Hey everybody, it's Miss Beth from The Adventures of Scuba Jack. I want you to subscribe here. I want you to give us two thumbs up or likes. And I want you to comment in the comment section. See you soon.